Hi, my name is Kate Mills, and together with Sarah Jane Blakemore, we wrote a review for the Annual Review of Psychology centered around the question, is adolescence a sensitive period for sociocultural processing? Now, adolescence is often defined as beginning around puberty and ending when one has attained a stable adult role in society. And in adolescence, the opinions of peers become very influential, and our ability to navigate the social environment continues to improve. And so we propose that studies of adolescent behavior should include measures of social influence because we think many adolescent behaviors, such as risk taking, emotion regulation, and other cognitive and affective processes are largely driven by social context. Now, the continued development of adolescent uh, social processing is reflected in the continued development of the social brain. Now, when I mention social brain, what I'm meaning is areas of the brain that are, that are consistently involved when we're engaging in uh, tasks that require us to think of mental states different from our own. So these can be tasks such as uh, trying to infer if a statement is sincere or ironic, or reading scenarios where one may feel embarrassment or guilt, which are social emotions uh, as opposed to non-social emotions such as disgust and fear. And so when individuals are doing tasks like this, uh, we see consistently a pattern of activation in areas of the brain that I will refer to as the social brain. Recently, our group has looked at how these areas of the social brain continue to develop throughout adolescence structurally. And so what I, when I say structure, what I'm meaning is gray matter. And gray matter is thought to compose of neural cell bodies, connection points, as well as glia. And what we did is we looked at a large sample of individuals between the ages of 7 and 30 who had had MRI scans at least twice across this time period. So what that means, we had a very large longitudinal sample of individuals across adolescence to look at. And what we found are these areas of the social brain continue to undergo changes in their structure between late childhood and young adulthood. This study shows structural changes, but there have been many studies looking at how adolescents and adults uh, engage the social brain when doing social cognitive tasks, like the ones I mentioned earlier. And so these studies have shown that while adults and adolescents consistently use the social brain network, the level of activity changes between adolescence and adulthood. And so we hope you enjoy the review, and thank you very much.